process within <laughs> um, understand the process within um, lawyer the, the license of the year awards um, understand what's involved um, and look at the process of filling out your application forms and understanding how you can make the most of that but also um, having uh, Chris on the line you're able to ask him any questions about how he found that process as well um, so we've just had another couple of people join uh, morning Greg uh, so I'll just wait a second, I think, and see if we, uh, we've got any stragglers coming through. Um, for those that have just joined, we are recording this morning's session um, so that it can be played back. Okay, don't dare start, but I'm, I'm sure uh, we can let people in as they come through. Um, so, um, License of the Year Award is uh, run by us, the British Institute of Inkeeping, and it's open to anybody who holds a personal license and has been in their pub for two years um, or more and has a food hygiene rating of four or five so you don't need to be a member of the bii so whether you are nominating yourself or you're nominating somebody else um, you don't need to have a membership to be able to enter the competition it's open to everybody in england scotland and wales um, you will need to provide proof or the person who is being nominated will need to provide proof of their personal license and their food hygiene rating when they do the initial stages of the competition. Um, but other than that, it's open to people who are on all different types of agreements. So you might be running your own pub as a freehold, you could be on a tenancy agreement, you could be running a managed house. Um, it's, it's all about uh, the process of how you run your business. And it looks at lots of different areas um, of your business. Um, to give an overall score um, and that's how we decide the winners. So we're going to talk um, today a little bit about the process and, and as I mentioned earlier we've got Chris on the line so um, if any of you have any questions about specific parts of the process Chris is here um, to be able to answer those. So the first step um, is to either nominate yourself or to be nominated by somebody else um, and you can do that via the BII website, so that's www.bii.org. Um, and there's a page for licensee of the year where you can see some information on last year's finalists um, and obviously Chris, um, Chris and Jason, who were the winners for last year. And also you can enter the competition. And once we've received that entry, we will then send out to you an application form, um, which you'll need to complete and send back to us by the 7th of March. So that application form, we're going to go through in a little bit more detail um, as we go through this session. And we will talk about um, the things that you can do to make that application form stand out. So when those applications come in, um, our team look through all of the applications that have been received and they use those application forms and the supporting evidence that comes in with them to decide on who goes through to the quarterfinals. So those application forms are really the first part of the process that's really important and will be the deciding factor as to whether or not you progress through the competition. Once we've um, we've done that first stage and we've announced who our quarter finalists are, um, we have a financial review which is undertaken by our expert judges, um, a social media and website audit. So we look at your social media accounts and your website accounts for the pub. Um, and we also have or arrange a mystery customer visit which is taken by a company called HGEM, so they'll come out to you. Obviously, um, they don't tell you they're coming and they'll be looking at all the different areas of your business from when they walk in from the car park right through to the service and either food or drink or just drink if you're a wet lead pub. So each of those sections, you will receive a score. And then from those scores, we decide on who the semi-finalists are um, that go through to the semi-finals and those semi-finalists will receive face-to-face -face interviews by the head judges. Those those face-to-face -face interviews um, will be completed and then when we've done that they will have another score allocated to them which will make our, our decision on who the finalists are and the finalists will go down to London on the 20th of June uh, for a final judging day at Sky where you'll have uh, interviews, panel interviews from lots of different industry experts that cover all sorts of areas of the business. So you'll have social media and PR experts, you'll have operators on there, um, financial experts, all sorts of different things, as well as the team from Sky. Um, 
So those panel interviews are completed the day before our summer event. And then you go out in the evening and the next day is the summer event. And that's where we announce our winners. So nobody knows who's going to win uh, right up until the day. So if we look back at the very first stage of that, um, the stage that we ask you to uh, complete your entry form and send it through to us is probably the first most important step for you. So um, you've got until the 7th of March to fill these in. Uh, if you've got them already, um, I will be sending you out a copy, those of you that are on the call or have registered for the call, so that you can see what's included in there. Um, but the entry form is going to ask you lots of questions around the type of business that you run, what kind of outlet is it, are you a wet lead, are you a country pub, are you a city centre, what makes you unique. Um, we're going to ask about your management style and how you look after your team. Uh, we'll ask around some of the financials around what sort of turnover bracket you sit in and what you've done recently to adapt your business um, and to embrace change for the future. So there will be lots of opportunities for you to fill in um, some information and to give us a really good idea of what your business is all about and why you believe you should be licensee of the year. So you can just fill the application form in, but lots of people um, give us additional information. And if you want to um, make sure that your application form stands out, bear in mind that the people who are looking at your application form don't know you and don't know your pub. So the more um, additional evidence that you can give us, uh, the more social media pictures you can give us or photographs, um, if you can give us some information on things that you've done to support your community, um, or diversify your business. All of these things will be really beneficial to making your application stand out from everybody else. So the team that will be looking at that will probably also look at your social media. So it's a really good opportunity, although it's not the formal social media audit until the next stage, it's a good chance for you to take a look at your website and your social media and make sure everything is cohesive. Um, make sure that all your times are up to date, your opening hours, um, and imagine that you're looking at it from the perspective of a brand new customer um, and somebody who doesn't know your venue. Um, Chris obviously uh, went through this process last year and, and came out the other side and won. Um, so congratulations again, Chris. Um, when you filled in your application form, can you tell us a little bit about the things that, um, the things that you included and the things that perhaps you would in include that you didn't know about at the beginning when you went through the process? Yeah, I think um, it's important to when you're filling your um, application just to kind of sit down beforehand and kind of list the kind of achievements that you've got got through in the last couple of years. Particularly, it's been tough. So, I think think about things, and it makes you reassess what you've done already. Um, and then, when you fill your form, and you can kind of push the aspects that will differentiate you, such as diversifying or um, doing more community work or that kind of stuff. So you just need to kind of think about exactly what you want to put across. As you said, the, the people judging aren't going to know your business. So it's just about making sure that you get the most important points across. So for us, it was about community work. It was about opening a shop. It was about doing takeaways um, when we couldn't open the pub. And then when we could open the pub, what we did then. So just kind of tell the story in a kind of cohesive way. Okay. And did you have any support when you were filling out your application form from anyone within the pub company that you uh, are attached to, or did you do that all yourselves? Um, to be honest, I, we did most of it ourselves, but I do think you sh we could have reached out more and asked for some more support. Um, I think that's important that you do try and do that if you are struggling with it, because it is a quite a daunting thing to try and fill out. So I'd say just kind of ask for help if you need it and people will will support you, I think. Excellent. Um, I think um, with the with the entry form and with all of the stages of lawyer, it's really important to bear in mind that this is quite a comprehensive um, process that we go through. But every stage is set out to be an opportunity for you to look at your business. Um, so with each stage, you will have an opportunity to stand back and see your business from a different perspective um, and look at things maybe that you wouldn't normally look at. Um, so when you're when you're putting your entry form in. If you have USPs, I was in a, a, a pub the other week and they have, uh, they're the only pub that use the tonic water for uh, the craft gin club membership. So they have a, a really unique selling point for people who like gin. Things like USPs um, are really, really worth putting into your application form because as Chris said, it just helps to build that picture 
um, and makes your business stand out um, from that really very first point. So the other things that you might want to think about, um, including if you've got any testimonials from your staff or your customers around things that you've done. So perhaps you, you're um, particularly strong in staff development. Um, maybe you've done some stuff for the community that your customers are really proud of. It's really great to include those in your initial application form. Um, any press coverage or little video reels that you maybe have done, um, or if you want to highlight any of your social media posts. Um, again, that first stage, the more information that you can get in there to build the picture of why you should be licensing of the year, um, the better. So you'll see as we go through these slides, um, these are some of our finalists from last year. Um, so they, they all went through the process um, that I've just gone through with you. Um, and this is Mick and Sarah from the Alexandra. And they have put some comments in here around uh, why it was important for them and what they enjoyed of the process. So they've had quite a lot of publicity from, from going through the process and some feedback from customers. And that was really important to them. Um, I mean, Chris, how do you find the process as you went through? Did you get lots of feedback from your customers or did it highlight your, um, your business at all locally? Yeah, it was a good um, talking point to kind of share the process as we got through to each stage and it really helped us kind of um, sort of interact with guests and talk about the process because I, I guess some people don't know what it is, but it's, it's when you start explaining it, it's a really good um, sort of milestone when you get through each stage for people to go, oh, wow, you're doing really well, but push you, pushes you forward. So it's really, it's really helpful. And every stage that you go through with the licensee of the year competition, you'll see these badges that say quarter finalists or semi finalists, and they're, they're provided to you by the BII for you to use in your social media. So if you look through some of our uh, semi and quarter finalists from last year, they use that in their websites going forward because it is quite an achievement, whichever stage you get to in the competition, because it is um, so intensive. So one of the other things that um, that falls into the competition and part of the scoring system is a mystery diner visit. So um, we call it diner, but if you are a wet lead pub, then we have a separate form, um, which HGM, who are the company that come out and do the guest experience visits, um, will use to score you against. So there'll be one for pubs that do food and there'll be one for pubs that do drink. So you will scored equally in terms of um, your ability to get top marks. Um, and this is a really, um, a really important part of the process. And I think at the moment, particularly in the current climate where, you know, everybody's feeling the squeeze, it's really important that you're looking at your overall um, guest experience um, in general, not just for the competition. So what we're going to do is send you all out um, today copies of those HGEM forms so you can see um, what's included in those visits and the kind of things that they'll be looking for. Um, and I think it's really helpful uh, if you take that and give it to a friend or a customer and ask them to go through that process um, in your pub and to look at all of those different areas because it will give you an opportunity to see it from somebody else's perspective, um, starting from outside the pub and working your way all the way through the experience of, of either coming in and having a drink with you or, or dining with you. Um, is that something that you did, Chris, as part of the process? Yeah, that was really helpful because it gave us the chance to go through uh, with the team what would be looked for and just any little niggles, you can kind of iron them out beforehand. It's a good thing to do generally anyway, just to go through the guest experience and with something we do as part of training for new new team members, but it was really helpful to do it before we knew that someone was going to come out. And was there anything that you picked up, particularly when you first went through that? Um, that you thought, oh gosh, I, I'd missed that before and I, I wouldn't have picked it up. Yeah, there was just things about sort of check backs to tables during the meal, like making sure that, that was 100% done every single time um, and just little things. But overall, it was a really good experience. I think it just makes you focus on the detail, which is what that kind of visits about. Great. Um, so in terms of what the winners receive, um, uh, this is always a question that people ask. So um, the, the competition licensee of the year award is sponsored by Sky Sports. So the winners do receive um, a year's commercial subscription for Sky Sports. They also receive 500 pounds for a party to celebrate with their, with their team. 
uh, a year's BII membership and lots of PR support um, from the BII um, going forward, as well as lots of feedback. And I know that, um, Chris, you particularly valued um, the feedback part of the process. So do, would you like to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so throughout the process, you, there are stages where you get feedback from the BII. Um, I think in hindsight, you could you could ask for more if you wanted it. We had a couple of calls with some of the judges to go through when we got to certain stages. And then at the end of the whole process, you get a whole pack of all the feedback from the day of judging. So that, again, just helps you train your team feedback and just kind of iron anything out that wasn't good as well. It's not just about it can a, a negative isn't a bad thing. It can just be something that you can improve on. Um, so there's always an opportunity to get feedback. And as you get through each stage from quarterfinal to semi-final, um, it's kind of a, a stepping stone and a, a milestone really to, to look back and then work out what you need to do next. And then we announced the finalists at the summer event, but just prior to that summer event, um, we also have uh, the judging day at Sky, which is a really uh, intensive part of the process. And I think that's on our next slide. Um, so the judging day at Sky uh, is made up of a number of panel interviews by various different um, experts from the industry. And we cover lots of topics, or they cover lots of topics around building your business and diversification, what you do for the community um, and what you're looking to do in the future. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your experience in the finalist judging day? Because I know that was one of the most uh, probably highly pressured uh, parts of the process for you. Yeah, it is. As you said, it's really intense uh, because you're going, you spend the whole day going uh, between panels of um, experts in the industry. So there's a lot of pressure on, on you to kind of get your, your points across. Again, it's about planning and preparing what you want to get, kind of get across in each panel because it's they're focused on different areas of your business um it's just really helpful to meet loads and it's like you're never going to get the opportunity to meet that many experts in your industry that are going to sort of really scrutinize your business and give you feedback directly and challenge you and make you think differently so it's just a really important thing i think one of the things that isn't included as a as when you win is that in fact you get to get all those people and make all those connections and they tell you what they think about your business directly it's really important um i think it's important that you plan what you want to say in each one as i said because it can just be a bit like you want to blurt everything out and tell them everything about everything that you've done but you need to kind of be a bit more concise to get your points across but overall it was a really really good day it was very very tiring but like it was worth it was worth it and it I think even if you don't get through to the win, it's it's massively important and really helpful. And how did you how did you prepare for that day um, in terms of prepping your questions? How did you know what to prepare and how what what kind of things did you prep for? So it kind of goes back to the previous point about having feedback. So you have a everyone that gets through to the final has a a call with uh, one of the head judges um, to go through where you've got to so far. Um, the good and the bad and that kind of helps you to build your um, answers and what you think you're going to be asked so so what what questions do you think would be asked who's going to answer that question out of the two of you who if there's two of you going in who's the expert on the finances versus the marketing and then think about right what are the key points that have been pulled out already or that we know that we could improve on so we can talk about things that aren't necessarily always the good things like we because we you get challenged on what could you do better how could you improve so you need to think about both sides of the story um but it's just about kind of picking your key messages and then making sure that you drive those through all your answers and really listen to the question because sometimes you can kind of go a bit off because you're thinking about something else but actually they're asking you specific questions to pull out specific information that will be judged and given a score so you kind of need to really be concise and just but don't stress about it too much because it can get a bit overwhelming, but it's a really, really good process. Probably not helped by the fact that you're filmed during it. Oh yeah, that really does <laughs> build the pressure, but yeah, it's, yeah, it does help because you can look back on it. Um, but yeah, just kind of think about what you want to get across. That's my key message. Excellent. So the closing date for the uh, completed application forms is the 7th of March. So you do still have some time um, to get those application forms in. Um, 
we've got some contact details on the back here so we will send this slide deck out to you guys afterwards um but what i'm going to do now is just ask if we have any questions um come through so jess i don't know if you've been monitoring the uh, screen for us there's none in the chat box but if anyone has any just let us know let's open up does that is anybody uh, got any questions that they want to ask for chris or myself yeah hannah it's phil we've already, we've already had a mystery visit for food and drink um they came last week so i, I don't know whether they're out of sync or they're okay ahead. that's that's not through the license of the year process so um that may may be something from somebody else well, they did say they're on, on behalf of the um, award. Okay. We haven't, um, Phil, we haven't actually got to that stage in the process yet. So I would, um, if you have the contact details, you can pass them on to the BI and we can double check who they came from if you want. But okay. um, through the lawyer process, we haven't sent out the HGEM results yet or the HGEM mystery shoppers. Okay, well, that's a bit of a mystery to me as well then, but I'll find <laughs> out where they were. Where, where's, your, where's your pub, Phil? In North Yorkshire, in the uh, Yorkshire Dales. And are you with a, a brewery or? Yeah, Mast, Marston's tenants. Okay. Um, I mean, I can check with them as well, but they, they said that it was to do with lawyer, did they? Yes. Okay. Well, we will double check. If you can, um, if you could drop me some details, that would be really helpful. That's cool. I will do. Thank you. So you'll already have some ideas of how to handle that when we do get to that stage. <laughs> yeah. It's when they say that who they are and they just, can can, I ha can we have a chat? And you're like, yeah, sure. Then they tell you, and they go, oh, right, okay, that, that was quick. That's uh, really interesting. Yeah. Uh, okay. Does anybody else have? Oh, uh, Anne's got her hand up. I I'm not Anne. I'm just using my colleague's computer. My name's Josh. Hi, um, Josh. I just wanted to just say that the sending out the 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 the, the guidance with the mystery shopper information was actually was really really useful um because it made you made me think about things that maybe we overlook um as a as a day-to-day -day running and our day-to-day training uh, which i think is something that chris mentioned when he was talking about the process so um i it's not not so much of a question as more of a statement so i just want to say thank you for sending that out um it was it was really useful and it's actually in reading that um just the other day it has made me look at things that i need to be tighter on with our teams uh, and and uh, actually um i'm planning on using that as a as a framework to to train our teams now as opposed to to just us doing it in a way that we think is natural um so it was just more of a, a thanks really for for sending out that information and um i hope you don't mind that we're going to use it to uh to, to move forwards with our training uh, training processes. I think. Listen, I think the whole um, the whole point of the license of the year competition um, in general is to give you guys an opportunity to really look at your businesses from uh, a perspective that you maybe haven't looked at them before. So, um, absolutely, I know that as Chris said earlier, he uses um, that format for some of his training for his new starters, and I, and I think it's really valuable. Um, I think you know going into a, to a pub. When you when you work in a in a pub or you live in a house or whatever, you become immune to um, things because you take it for granted and you don't notice things. You might always come in the same door, um, and so it's really helpful to have someone come in a different door because they will spot things that probably you haven't noticed before. Or you know, you might go into you might have a, a, a guy running a pub and not know that there's a problem in the ladies' toilets because he doesn't go in the ladies' toilets to check. So, you know, there are lots of different things that you can use this process for. And I think that's, you know, a, a fantastic idea to use those forms for, for training to improve your business. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've got anything to add on that, Chris. Yeah, I think, like you said, the whole point of the process isn't to kind of call you out on things. It's to just improve what you're doing. You're obviously doing something right if you're going through the process, as in you've been, you've, you filled the form in right you've you've caught the judge's eye you've just got to kind of embrace it's sometimes a bit tricky when someone's telling you that what's wrong with your business but like you say if you're in it all the time you just sometimes become blindsided by stuff so just take the opportunity to and if you don't understand what someone's said or fed back ask the question keep asking for feedback i think that's what we probably didn't do enough of 
I think you can definitely just keep asking and that's what the BII is there for. Does anyone else have any questions that they want to ask Chris while he's on the line? We have one question is, uh, why did you decide to apply, Chris? Um, we kind of, we saw that there was an opportunity to apply and we thought that we have actually, again, you, sometimes you don't stop and think about what you've achieved, but we felt like we'd had done a good job throughout the pandemic, particularly in terms of kept keeping going. So I think we just thought, well, why don't we just try and even just for ourselves, think about what we've done and how and like sort of go through the process and just see what happens. And it was just, I think, really useful for us to stop, look back and think about what we'd achieved and what we could do next and to help you plan for the future as well. So even if you don't get through, it's just a really useful process that you wouldn't normally do because you just carry on, you just keep going. You don't think to stop and look back, but you should, it, everyone should do it. It's just a really useful process. And then if you get through, you can then start utilizing the feedback um, to get, again, just to improve your business, but also think about what you've done and what you want to do next. So for us, it then meant we knew what we wanted to do for this year. We started planning um, because we knew what we'd already achieved and where, where we'd had growth, where we could grow even more or where we thought that that area of the business is kind of is looking after itself. Let's focus on this other bit of the business, like takeaway or shop or whatever. Um, so it just kind of gives you a focus. So it's, it's, def it's just worth doing for that reason alone, let alone getting through, basically. I guess they say you should uh, take some time to work on your business rather than in your business. And exactly that, yeah. Um, yeah, in one, in one sentence, um, something that you probably don't usually take the opportunity to do. That's it, definitely. Excellent. Well, unless we've got any more questions, we'll wrap up. Um, please feel free to drop us any emails. Um, if you have any more questions or something comes for you uh, or comes into your mind at a later stage, um, just let us know and we'll be more than happy to answer those questions for you. Um, and good luck. We look forward to seeing your applications. Thank you.